Hi, it's Ryan from Ryan Fowler Photography and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you a bit of a studio setup and technique you can do at home that's easy, it's simple and it turns out some really great results. So what we're going to be doing is using a top-down perspective on some fruit and then I've got a strobe, you can use a speed light, you can use um, most forms of light that you've got, um, probably in terms of flash rather than continuous lighting. Although if you've only got continuous, then you're welcome to try it with that as well. But what we've got is a strobe here. I've got the Godox 8600BM with a whatever reflector, standard reflector dish it's got on there. And then underneath here, I've actually got a piece of white foam core sitting on uh, underneath these two saw horses that I picked up from Bunnings for pretty cheap. Uh, and then we've also got a glass pool panel but if you've got say a glass coffee table you can maybe remove that top glass section balance it over something clear put the um, put the foam core underneath and then flash some light onto it so that light hitting the foam core is what's going to create our white background for this shot now this morning I'm actually setting up with some oranges I have done this with kiwi fruits and there's lots of other fruits you can do it with um, you just need to slice them finely and let some light come through. So I've got images with strawberries, uh, lemons, limes, cucumber, kiwi fruit, as I said, and oranges like this as well. So for the camera, I'm using a Fuji X-T2 with the 80mm macro. Um, if you've got a standard 18 to 55 mm lens, you can use that, which actually has quite a good minimum focusing distance. And then partner that with a crop sensor of you know, whatever camera brand you've got. Uh, that will give you a pretty decent level of macro to get some really, really creative and inventive shots. So, like I said, I'm using the 35, the um, 80 millimeter here, and we're set up with the uh, re remote trigger to trigger the flash. If you've got a wired remote flash, whatever it is, as long as you can get that flash wireless or wired or remote is the word I'm looking for somehow, then you're in business. This is a really, really easy setup to do. I've got it tethered into Capture One as well, simply because I like being able to transfer images direct rather than having to look sort of through this slightly convoluted setup. Um, but yeah, it's tethering straight into Capture One Pro, which I can trigger from as well. And I have done a little bit of video. I've set up one shot here and I'm shooting at 1 250th of a second, which is the maximum flash sync speed for this camera. I've got an aperture of f9, so it gives me a reasonable depth of field looking straight down. And then ISO 200, which is the lowest native ISO for this camera. Uh, the flash power is on 1 8th power, which is giving me a pretty nice clean white background and lots of light emanating up through the oranges, or the orange slices. Um, so there's a shot, I'll bring up a capture one screen as I shoot, and there's a shot right now with just sort of a single orange with some nice uh, clear white space around it at the moment. So what I've done here is I've set up a sort of frame of thinly sliced orange slices, and you probably need a nice sharp knife to get them really sort of smack bang on. Um, and this little scene I actually framed looking through the LCD on the camera. So I could see roughly how it looked rather than trying to guess or try and look through the viewfinder. And then I've got the Siri tripod on sort of balanced, it's got some books and boxes and stuff down there. And it's extended up with the center column inverted so that I can be looking straight down onto what I'm shooting. So, first thing we're going to do is, I'm actually going to take this out of video mode because that's what it was on, so I could film my little setup bit for you guys. And I will go ahead and just find the focus point, so I'll make sure you can either do that manually or with autofocus, depending on how close your autofocus works. Um, manual focus is probably going to be a better option. Zoom in all the way as far as you can and just adjust the focus so that it's really, really nailed down. Okay, so now that we have our focus set, and I used autofocus to get it pretty much where it was, and then uh, just adjusted it with manual, although it was pretty well bang on accurate anyway. So I've got the camera set up, it's at uh, F9, let me just adjust these settings, 
uh, 1 to 50th of a second and down to ISO 200. I just had to adjust because there are a couple of little things that uh, weren't working for me properly in the first take and that was just my own user error. So it's all fixed up now and the settings are back to normal. The flash power is on 1 16th. Um, so what I'll do is, I know that I've got that focused, I'll come over into Capture One, go into the shooting panel and then hit the shutter button, which will now bring up this. So this is what we're looking at in terms of the image we want. Um, it's probably not perfect at this stage. Um, I would like to make a couple of adjustments, so I'll look through the viewfinder and just do that. and. I want to try and sort of centralize one of them and just bring that around into here. Give a little more room there. A tiny little... If you keep adjusting these, you end up getting little bits of food and fruit on the, uh, on the glass, which is a bit annoying. So you've got to try and get it right sort of relatively quickly, at least try and have an idea in your head of what you want first. So I know the focal focus point doesn't change because it's on the same plane of focus. I've just shifted a few of the elements around. So I'll take that shot now. There we go, that's actually looking quite good. It's a bit of fun, it's bright, it's bubbly. What I'll do is I'll just come over into the adjustments menu and see what it looks like with and without some minor adjustments on it. So maybe bring up that exposure, pull the highlights down, and just try to adjust each image as, as you see fit. You don't have to do it as you go. Um, this was just for more of the purpose of the example. Um, for me, I'm not really feeling this shot. Um, I'd want to keep playing around with it, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll probably end up taking about I don't know, maybe 10, 15 shots, just to make sure I have that exact one that I'm really, really happy with. So I can keep doing that. And what you can also do is adjust the camera up and down. Now, I've sort of restricted myself a little bit here, which is um, on me, um, in terms of going up, down, uh, adjusting, moving around. So even doing this handheld can often be quite beneficial to you, um, just so that you can get those heights different adjustments, move things around, see the elements in a different way. Um, and that's what I might do actually. I'll just adjust some of these so it looks a bit more like Olympic rings. And just pull that forward. That's looking quite nice there. And I'll just find that focus point, come back into the capture menu and hit go. And that shot's actually quite alright. What I might do is I like that style of it, so I'm going to just adjust this so I can take the camera off and then I'll just move the tripod completely. So just move my pile of books and then I don't have a fan above my head because it's summer here in Australia and it's pretty hot. So I'll just grab a step ladder. couple of steps up and now I've got a bit more flexibility in terms of actually going up and down so this is what I'll do I'll just keep I'll just keep looking through the camera and while I'm talking to you I'll look through the uh, LCD now these ones are actually looking really nice I'm a lot happier with these shots just pull some of these orange slices together and if you're doing multiple fruits try and make them unique. So I do a different style for each fruit. Um, and a bit earlier in the video I brought up some of the um, some of the other shots that I have done just so that you could see some of the different options. And I'm just adjusting the focus, adjusting where each of the orange slices are and a bit overexposed. So because I've got a macro lens and it's quite a good benefit to have to have one, um, I'm just going to go really, really nice and close in here. 
I'm just trying to find lots of different variants and different angles. So you probably can't actually see my head, I just realized that. Um, but there's a few options and a few different shots. Um, and you can see as I'm taking a photo how fast it's pulling into capture one as well, which is a um, really good benefit of the program. So I hope that you've actually enjoyed this video, you learned something, you saw a very simple setup and how it can be quite fun. So you could spend half a day, a day, just uh, playing around, mucking around in the studio and really experimenting with some different types and techniques of photography to improve your portfolio or put together some more content. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to know what you think, and if you've tried it, uh, that would be great to hear as well. But anyway, I'll see you in the next video.